Jacob's trouble is still to come, but he will be saved out of it. Jews are black. That's another thing. Here's the continent of Africa, but they say that's Middle East. That's part of Africa, but they changed the name. Yes. To just throw you off, okay? Yeah. Revelations 13 and 5, the beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies and to exercise its authority for 42 months. That's three and a half years. Jumping down to verse 7, it was given power to wage war against God's holy people and to conquer them. Jacob's trouble is still to come. The trouble of Israel, the trouble of Jacob. It says that the beast is going to be given power for 42 months. And then it says that the beast is going to be able to conquer God's holy people. Mm -mm -mm. And it will be given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. So over everybody, Jacob's trouble is still to come but he will be saved out of it. Jeremiah 30 and four, this is the famous verse of Jacob's trouble. These are the words of the Lord spoken concerning Israel and Judah. This is what the Lord said. Listen to this. Cries of fear are heard, terror and not peace. Acts and see, can a man bear children? Can a man bear children? During the times of Jacob's trouble, there's going to be a time <laughs> coming in the last days where they're going to say, can a man bear children? Where a lot of the men are going to be acting effeminate. A lot of the men are going to be acting like women. Can can a man, I'm talking about specifically of Jacob's people, can a man bear children? You ever been to Atlanta? You ever been to some parts of Houston? You ever been to Vegas, California, some parts of it? There's a community. You ever seen the movies that's been coming out lately about, even about the white people, you know, the Eternals, and then the only black man in the movie is gay, the only black man in every movie you keep seeing, they pushing a the narrative, the strong black woman, the effeminate black man. Hollywood wants you to think that the white colonizers were destroying Africa and then black women rose up and they were stronger than black men even and they became so powerful and fierce that they fought off the white colonizers to preserve their healthy, good way of life. Right? Wrong. Can a man bear children? I'm talking amongst Jacob's people. Mm -mm -mm. Then it says, listen to this to Jeremiah 30 and 4, uh, and 4 through 7. Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor. Why do I see amongst black people, amongst black men, every man acting like a woman? Even the men I thought were men act like women. I'm talking about people I looked up to my whole life, the most alpha males in my family, my cousins and family members. Today, they women run them, but that woman ain't running me. You can take that to the bank. Why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach, every strong man I know of the black community got his hands on his stomach like a woman? They, they see you. Focus is here. Lord, I'm preaching right now. I hope I can't even get off this. And every and every face deathly pale. How awful that day will be. How awful that day will be. No other day will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. Jacob's trouble is still to come. I got so much I want to say. Jacob's trouble is is still to come, but I got to hurry this up. So the Bible says in Revelations 13 and 5 that the beast was given proud words to utter blasphemies and to conquer God's holy people for three and a half years. I'm telling you that this is this is coming on the second three and a half years, not this first three and a half years. This trouble to come is coming on the second three and a half years. We are currently right now living in the first three and a half years. It's going to end somewhere around 2023 or at the end of 2024, somewhere around that time. And then the second three and a half years come. Oh, I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. So on this second three and a half years, the beast is giving proud words to utter uh, proud words and blasphemies against God and to conquer God's holy people on the second three and a half years. And I've told y'all that at the second three and a half years, at the um, at, at, at the last seal, when the last seal is broken, the seventh seal, God's holy people are revealed. I want you to see this real quick, real quick. Second address 16 and 70, because this gives you more insight to how Jacob how Israel, how God's holy people are, is going to be revealed to the world. Look at this, second address, 16, starting at 70. For there shall be in every place and in and in the 
and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear God. There's going to be a great insurrection amongst God's holy people. They shall be like madmen, sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear God. This is talking about how they're going to be conquered. This is talking about that trouble for Jacob. Now listen, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. Then shall they be known who are my chosen during this time of Jacob's trouble. When they come for uh, uh, Jacob, when they come for the real Israelites, when they come for God's real holy people, then the world is going to know who we are because we're going to be revealed because we're going to be being targeted. There's going to be an insurrection amongst us. And the reason why they're going to come after us because we're going to be sealed and there's going to be a power on us. But I'm going to get to that in a minute. Listen up. Listen good. Then they shall be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Here are ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your God. For the day of trouble is at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Jacob's trouble is still to come but he will be delivered. I got to hurry this up. Revelation seven and one. So revelation six talks about the seals being broken. I've already given you guys a timeline. I told you how the first seal has already been broken. Then the second seal, then the third seal. And now we got the fourth seal coming up. Then the fifth seal, then the sixth seal, the seventh seal, revelation seven and one is about God's holy people being sealed. <laughs> revelation seven and one through four. After this, I saw Four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice for the four angels who had been given the power to harm the land and the trees. He says, do not harm the land or the tree or the trees until I have put my seal on the foreheads of the servants of God. And then I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel. And if you jump down, that's Revelation 7, 1 through 4. If you jump down, Revelations 9 through 10, and it says, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, language. These people from every nation, tribe, people, and language, it says that they have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. It says the 144,000 kept God's laws, commandments, and statutes blamelessly. The people from the great multitude, tribe, and language, listen to this. Well, listen to what I'm saying. From every nation, right? These people were washed in the blood of the lamb. When they asked Christ, why have you come? He said, I've come only for the lost, lost sheep of the house of the tribe of Israel. The people that were scattered in all these nations, they lost. Christ is their sacrifice. So they're, they've been blood washed. It ain't fair. They've been blood washed in Christ's blood so that they can receive the same power as the 144,000 because they are blameless before God, just like the 144,000 because Christ is their sacrifice. I can go through this proving it with the law. Oh God, Leviticus 5 and 17, uh, 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 um, 1 John 3 and 4, which says that sin is the transgression of God's law. So if you break God's laws, you sin. And if you go over to Leviticus 5, it shows you that how that you have to give an offering or a sacrifice for your sin. Christ is their sacrifice. Once you give that offering and that sacrifice, now you are blameless before God. Now your debt has been paid before God. Now you are blameless just as the, like the versions of the 144,000 created new, washed new. So now you can receive the same power as them. Mm -mm -mm. And who are these people coming out of every tribe, nation, and language? Leviticus 26 and 33, but I will scatter you among the nations and I will draw out a sword after you as your land becomes desolate and your cities a wasteland. Wait a minute. Revelation 7 and 9 said, and there I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Leviticus 26 and 33 says, but I will scatter you among the nations. Wait a minute. Nehemiah 1 and 8 said, remember, beseech these that the, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses saying, if thee transgresses me, I will scatter you abroad amongst the nation. I will scatter you amongst all the nations, amongst every people, amongst every tribe. And then Revelation 7 and 9 says that there's going to be some people coming out of every nation, people. That's the way they ain't, they ain't ready for this. Because Deuteronomy 30 and 3 says that the Lord thy God 
will turn away thy captivity and have compassion among thee and will return thee and gather thee from every nation, tribe, language, and people. They don't want to hear what I'm saying. Deuteronomy 33 says that God is supposed to say he's going to gather a people from every tri tribe, nation, and people. It it's clear who these people are because the same people that were scattered are going to be the same people that was gathered. Oh my God. Jubilee 1 and 14 says, and after that, they will turn from me from amongst what? The Gentiles. Wait a minute. The Gentiles nations, they were scattered into all nations, tribe, people, languages, and then they're going to be gathered from all nations, people, tribes, languages, uh -huh. and then sealed by God. Oh, I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. Jacob's trouble is still to come, but he will be saved out of this. I got to hurry this up. How awful the day will be Jacob's trouble. The great tribulation and judgment is often referred to in the Bible as the day. Matthew 24 and 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall there ever be. Matthew uh, and then 22. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days have been shortened. I'm going somewhere with this because I'm trying to show you how Jacob's trouble is to come. But he will be saved out of it. I'm talking about the second three and a half years, those that are coming up, the three and a half years that are coming up. There's going to be a trouble for Jacob because of this trouble. He's going to be revealed because he's going to be sealed. He's going to be sealed. He's going to have this supernatural power. God is about to pour his spirit out on him. Once God pours his spirit out on him, now he's revealed. Now he's going to have trouble. They're going to come after him because he's revealed. <laughs> when everybody see why are they coming after them, they're going to come after them because he's revealed. By them coming after them, they are revealing them. And the whole world is waiting in e uh, eager expectation for what? For the children of God to be revealed. Revelations 12 and 12. Jacob's trouble. Oh, Lord, listen to this. Satan is going to pursue us, but we will be saved. Revelations 12 and 12. Look at this. Woe to the earth and to the sea, because the devil has come down to you. He is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child, Jacob's trouble. This is on the second three and a half years. How you know this is because if you keep reading, oh Lord, help me preach this thing, Revelations 12 and 14, the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to a place prepared for her in the wilderness where she would be taken care of for time, times, times and a half out of the serpent reach. So for three and a half years. This is the second three and a half years. So woe to the earth, the scripture says, the devil has come down to you. When he comes down to you, he's pursuing the woman. We're talking about Jacob's trouble. Matter of fact, I'm sorry, the dragon gives power to the beast. The dragon is Satan. So this is in the second three and a half years. I'm trying to show y'all something. This is also, I'm going to get into this in a minute, but this is also the, tr the trumpet judgments also I have prophesied to you starts in the second three and a half years. And what happens during the trumpet judgments? The angel of the abyss comes out. You see? The angel of the abyss. And if you've seen the movie Black Adam, the angel of the abyss comes out. Uh, um, it's not necessarily that he is Satan, but Satan is the one that gives the angel of the abyss power. So uh, the dragon gives power to the beast. It's too much. It's too much in this. It's, it's a lot in this. So Satan comes down. Satan is pursuing us. The beast is pursuing us. Satan gives power to the beast, that beast that is going to pursue us and that is going to be able to conquer us. Revelations 12 and 14 says that the woman was given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly to a place prepared for her in the wilderness. She was giving two wings of a great, so Satan is pursuing her. And then she's given two wings of a great eagle to flee from the serpent's reach, to flee out of the dragon's reach, to flee from Satan's reach. So Satan can't harm her. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. God's holy people will be able to soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. They will have power. When the seal of God comes on them, they're going to have supernatural powers. I'm trying to tell you something here that Jacob's trouble is still to come, but he will be saved out of it. Jeremiah 34, let's, 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 let's get back to the top. What am I trying to tell you here? These are the words of the Lord spoken concerning Israel and Judah. This is what the Lord says. Cries of fear are heard, terror and not peace. Acts and see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like, like, like a woman in labor? Why do I see every strong man acting like a woman? in these last days. 
This is what God is saying. Now you imagine, you see how many black men you see acting like women right now? Imagine two years from now, how many more you finna see? I was just talking about this the other day. I was saying, <laughs> it might be five of us left. I mean, it's going to be a small percentage of us as what I say, heterosexual males, black males, for sure, in the next two years, because the movies and the indoctrination of the music, uh, I've listened to the music the other day of, uh, uh, what was his name, Lil Nas X, he say, I ain't lost since I've been gay, y'all. I said, wait a minute, what is this, what is he talking about, <laughs> right? So I'm saying they they rapping about it, they singing about it, and you can only be what you see. They can't see a heterosexual, strong, masculine man. So you only can be what you see. So I say in the next two years, imagine how many of us will even be here. Why do I see every strong man that I even know with his hands like a woman, acting like a woman? This is what God is saying. This is about to happen in the last days. Oh, God, let me continue. Every face turned deathly pale. I can get in that too, because I was just talking to my wife about that a minute ago. Oh, I'll get in that later. How awful that day will be. No other day will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. He will be saved out of it. Oh, Lord, he will be saved out of it. So you're going to be saved because you're going to have this power. Uh, let's, let's get into it. How are you going to be saved? Jeremiah 30 and 8. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Wait a minute. No longer will foreigners enslave them. No longer will the Americans enslave them. No longer will the Germans enslave them. No longer will the Britons enslave them. No, uh, no longer will the French be able to enslave them. No longer will the Arab nations be able to enslave them. No longer will the Chinese be able to enslave you. No longer will the Gentiles be able to slave, in, in, uh, listen to this, to enslave you, to hold you in captivity. To uh, uh, But right now they got armies, they got militaries, they got nuclear weapons. How in the world are you finna be able to break the yoke off of your neck? There's a yoke on your neck. Ain't your, your face ain't on the dollar. There's a yoke on your neck. You have to work in their nations. You have to go to them for need and want. They literally have a yoke on your neck. It's like your dog. He has to listen to you because you were the one that feed him. And if he didn't, you'll shoot him because you have more weapons than him. You're stronger than him. So how all of a sudden are you going to be able to break the yoke off of your neck? Oh, Lord, help me preach this thing. Acts 2 and 17, and it shall come to pass that in the last day, say of God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And uh, you let the Christians read this. They think they're talking about everybody. But God was talking to a specific group of people. And you notice because Acts is only quoting Joel 2 and 28, which was only talking to the Israelites. I will pour out my spirit among the Israelites and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dreams, dream dreams. So when God pours out his spirit on us. Jeremiah 31 and 31 and Hebrews 8 and 8 talks about how his laws are going to be implanted on our hearts and in our minds, meaning we're going to have God's mind, his principles, his ideals. We're going to know it without question. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. So we're going to have God's spirit. Right. Because, you know, people going around, around today say they have the spirit of God. I'm telling you that uh, one, one there's a scripture that God said, I sap, I sap their strength, strength. Remember when uh, people used to live Moses and uh, Abraham and, and uh, even um. Adam lived to 900 and Noah lived for, for a long time. And then even after the flood, people were still living for a long time. And then God said, what? My spirit will, now, will not wrestle with men for much longer. Meaning God took his spirit from us because if we still have the spirit of God, why do we die? But these people were living to 900 and a thousand and they were going to live forever if it wasn't for Adam. They were living for, they were living for a long time. So why all of a sudden did they stop living for so long? This is so good. But God says, in the last days, I'm going to pour my spirit back onto you. <laughs> and when you have God's spirit, you're going to have God's mind. But most importantly, you're going to have God's power. Zechariah 12 and 8. On that day, the Lord will defend the people of uh, Jerusalem so that the weakest among them will be like David. And the house of David will be like God. Like the angel of the Lord going before them. Do you hear what I'm saying? Leviticus 26 and 8 says, five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. Wait a minute. 
at first, I read for you Second Edges, I think it's 16 and 70, where it says that you're going to be fallen by the sword by your enemies. They're going to be slain. They're going to come kill us. God going to steal us, and then they're going to come kill us, kicking us out of the house. We're going to be running and hide, go to the wilderness, and we're going to have power. Oh, look, they're trying to give, because because the beast, the devil is going to give the beast power to conquer you. So they're going to con come conquer you means to kill you, come fight you. So they're going to be coming to fight us, beating us up. Even with our powers, we're going to be losing. We're going to run, hide off in the wilderness. And then all of a sudden, the tide is going to turn. Do you see what I'm saying? Then all of a sudden the tide turns. And now all of a sudden five of you chasing a hundred and a hundred of you chasing 10,000. And your enemies now falling by the sword before you. Joshua 23 and 10 says, one man shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He is with you that fights for you and he, as he has promised you that he would. God is going to fight for us. Oh, I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. God is on your side. Oh, I hope y'all hear what I'm saying. Jacob's trouble was still to come, but you will be saved out of it. I got one last little thing that I want to say. One last little thing, but it's kind of a big thing. When the power comes on you, I'm going to run through this quick. When the power comes on you, do not seek vengeance. For vengeance is the Lord, Deut Deuteronomy 32 and 35, vengeance is mine, I will repay in due time, their foot will slip for their day of disaster is near and their doom is coming click quickly. Do not seek vengeance when this power comes on you. Vengeance is the Lord's. There's a movie, a, a TV show that I watched a long time ago called The Gifted. And I've been talking to y'all. Well, I don't know if I, 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 I don't know if many of y'all heard, have heard me say this before, but the X-Men is about us. It's about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. You can look this, you can Google this. The X-Men, you remember how the X-Men, when you when you originally seen the X-Men for the first time ever in your life, the X-Men, they just wake up and, and, and a certain group of people have powers. It's like they just woke up. Nobody knew how they got it. It wasn't an origin story. They now they made origin stories now. But I'm talking about when it first started, it was just like one day they woke up and certain people had this X gene, this, this, this gene inside of them that was different than everybody else. And it gave them supernatural powers. And one group of the people wanted to integrate with the society. Oh, I just want to work at Starbucks. Just give me some reparations and I'll stay here. The other group, Magneto's group, wanted a mutant homeland. They don't hear what I'm saying. Wanted to be separate from the humans. That's all he wanted. Was to be separate. That's all he wanted. Now, in the movies, Magneto, they make paint him as the devil. And they paint uh, 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 Professor X, who is supposed to be uh, Martin Luther King, as good. Because that's what they want you to do when you get your power, to just integrate with them. They don't want you to separate. Oh, Lord, help me preach this thing. But God said, be ye set apart. I'm giving too much in this video. And I hope I haven't lost nobody yet, because I was trying to go on vengeance. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to go on. Do not seek vengeance. If you notice, so now that's the X-Men. Then they did a spinoff called The Gifted. It, uh, it's a TV show called The Gifted. And The Gifted, many of them are hiding. They got the powers because they're being pursued by Satan. It's a time of trouble for Jacob. That's literally what the whole show is about. It's a time of trouble for Jacob. And, and, and they're hiding. Huh, ye are gods, but you're all children of the most high God. They're hiding from Satan. They got these powers, but they hide. And they could just go out. Why do they want to just go out and fight them? Any one of them that go out and fight against the government or against Satan ends up getting killed. This is in the show. Go watch it. It's called The Gifted. Any one of them that tries to go out and fight or that steals something or does anything against God's laws gets killed. Because Psalms 82 says that ye are gods, but you shall die like men. I'm trying to show you something right now. I'm trying to show you something right now. So if you wait on the Lord, because vengeance is mine, and if you keep reading in Psalms 82 and 8, it says, Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. You're going to inherit all nations if you wait on God, because Christ is coming. And if I go back up, oh my goodness, if I go back up to the scripture, it said that David is coming. David is going to be, uh, uh, be, uh, be risen. Jeremiah 30 and 8, in that day declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off of your necks, and it will tear off their bonds and no longer will foreigners enslave you. Instead, they will serve the Lord, their God, and David, their king, who I will rise up for them. Christ is coming. I got so much I got to say. Christ is coming. So when you get your powers, do not try to go seek vengeance. Matter of fact, Psalms 82 in, in, in the scriptures preceding Psalms 82 and 6, Psalms 82 and 2 says, defend the poor and the fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and the needy, Deliver the poor and the needy, rid them of the hand of evil. So protect the needy. Just like in the show, The Gifted, that's what they're doing. This might be too much. This might be too much. The guy is hiding and he's protecting the needy and the poor and the families and the fatherless and the, you know what I'm saying? The orphans and the, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's who, he, who he's protecting. And he got power so he could go out and fight him. But instead of going out and fight him, he don't. He wait on the Lord. Oh, that's what you're supposed to do. 
I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So Satan will try to bait you out of high. No, I, I, should I get into this? Satan will try to bait you out. Matthew 24 and 23. I want somebody to type me that they got this whole message, that they understood the whole thing, that God gave them the revelation of everything I said. I want somebody to type that in the comments if you, when you watch this message. Tell me if you, if you got to this part. And tell me so far if you got what I was saying, if you got what I'm not what I'm saying, what God is saying to you, if you was able to discern the scriptures that I have given you. Listen to this part. Satan is going to try to bait you out of hiding because the scripture said in Revelations 12 that you're going to get have wings like eagle and you're going to go off into the wilderness. I showed you in second Ezra how they're going to come after you and not throw you out your houses, try to kill you. So, of course, they come after you, try to kill you. You go high. You're going to go out of here. You're going to leave out of Atlanta and go into the woods. You're going to leave out of the major of metropolitan cities of Los Angeles and go off into the woods, the wilderness. If you're in a, any city, you just leave out the city and you go off into the wilderness. You got the powers of God now. You can bring water up out of the ground. I was going to read you that scripture, but I didn't have time right now because I've already went over my time that I wanted to give you. But you can go off into the wilderness. You're going to be able to tell that mountain, no, listen, to get up and go over there. So it means you're going to be able to make shelter for yourself with your powers. Hear me and hear me good. Just like in this show, like I told you, called The Gifted. They go hiding, they're hiding in the cities. But with all the power they had, they should have just went off into the woods. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Oh, Lord, help me preach this thing. Matthew 24 and 23. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, here is Christ, here is Jesus, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive. If possible, even the elect meaning that you've been revealed at this time. So they're going to even, if possible, they're going to even try to deceive you. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is out in the wilderness, do not go out to him. Here he is in the inner rooms. Do not believe it. For as lightning comes, for, for as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will the coming of the son of man. Meaning that when Christ get here, we all going to know it no matter what lord i thank you father god we thank you lord we're so grateful to be your people it's a blessing it's a blessing the cursed are blessed we're grateful because we know we don't deserve it we're grateful because we know we don't deserve it lord we thank you for your mighty word and for your understanding of your word in christ's name amen amen Thank you so much for listening. Please give a tie offering or a donation at Cash App Money Sign Leo Dunson. You can also go to leodunson.com slash donate and may the glory of God and his blessings be upon you. Last scripture, Jeremiah 30 and 10. So do not be afraid. Jacob, my servant, do not be dismayed. Israel declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace and security and no one will make you afraid. I am with you. I am with you. The spirit of God is going to be on you. You see what I'm saying? I am with you and I will save you. I am with you. You're going to have me with you, declares the Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. All right, I'll talk to y'all soon. I hope y'all got that. Jacob's trouble is still to come in the second three and a half years. But you will be saved out of it. And I read for you even in Edris. I think that was second Edris. Yep, 16 and 70, how it shows, how it says that they shall be known who are my chosen. So the trouble of Jacob is going to reveal who you are. And this is all happening in the second three and a half years. Even when you when you get the seal placed on you, they're pursuing you because of the seal. But 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 the dragon gives the beast power to conquer you. You don't see them making all the different uh, um, robot armies and things like that. They're making this the same in that show, The Gifted. They got robot armies. Ah, oh, I, I, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I'll, I, I'll talk to y'all later about this. We'll, we'll do a part two, and I, I'll keep this going. We'll do a part two of Jacob's Trouble, uh, uh, but he will be saved out of it. All right, talk to y'all soon. Shalom, shalom. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Almost every other day, someone asks, Hey, Leo, how can we support you? You can support by subscribing at ministries.leodunson.com and you will get my exclusive channel there. You can support me over there or you can also support by Cash App. Cash App, money sign, Leo Dunson. You can also go to leodunson.com slash donate. All of your gifts, all of your uh, donations, 
Uh, you un you honestly don't know how much I appreciate it. I, I can't even articulate it in words how grateful I am for someone to donate and sow into this ministry. It really, truly is a blessing to have people that support you. May the glory of God and his blessings be upon you. Shalom. Shalom.